All right, so Dr. Hartman, uh, because he is an avid alligator hunter, he also cleans all of his own alligator uh, spoils that he uh, collects. And uh, he cleans these skulls out in a basin. He starts out uh, by basically almost boiling the water in the basin. He takes it up to 99 degrees C. We wouldn't want to have any phase changes, so he makes sure that it stays very slightly below uh, 100 degrees C. He then is going to add four alligator heads, and each alligator head is going to weigh uh, 11 kilograms and have an almost freezing uh, temperature. Okay, Again, we wouldn't want any phase changes of anything. He would like to mix... Um, he would like the mixture of the water and the alligator heads to reach a final temperature of 74 degrees C when he comes back to check on it 14 minutes from now. He has a heater for the little basin, um, and it outputs 110 volts, and he can set the heat output based on a little knob. And what the knob controls is how much current is absorbed by the heater. Okay? Um, and We'll assume, this is actually a big assumption here, but we're going to assume that the heads and the water are all have reached some form of equilibrium by the time he gets back 14 minutes from now. Okay? Um, we won't question that assumption, but since it's given to us, we'll just go with that assumption. Okay? Real life, that probably wouldn't happen, but let's say that that happens. Um, what we want to know is what current consumption setting should he choose for the heater so that he makes this... Uh, final temperature that he's looking for. All right, what's the basic idea? What's the big picture of this question? Okay, we are looking for uh, current, right? But the big picture is that we have a change in internal energy of the heads, right? If we add to that the change in internal energy of the water, I meant to put an E right there. Change in internal energy of the water. Okay. What should this be equal to? Yeah, so the total energy change. And why is there a total energy change? Because we're adding energy, right? We're adding energy from the heater. Okay. So all we got to do is fill in the details. Right, that's the big picture. So let's fill in the details. Um, each change in internal energy is based on what? Mass, Mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. Okay. So we we'll just need to do that first for the heads. All right. So how much mass do I have of heads? Four times 11 kilograms right? That's how much mass of alligator head I'm going to put into the basin, right? What about the specific heat of an alligator head? Okay, it's given to you right over here, 3,500 joules per kilogram degree C, which we will apply without question. All right, then what? Okay, I need a change in temperature. Now, the change in temperature for an alligator head is based on the final temperature being 74 degrees C and the initial temperature being 1 degree C. Okay, so there's that much. Then what? Now I need to take the change in internal energy of the water, right? Same type of format, more or less. What's the difference? Yeah, we need to convert some gallons into some kilograms. Okay? Well, here's how I suggest we do that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to, just in the interest of uh, compactness of the solution I'm doing here, let me just do this above. The mass of water, I'll do it in a different color also, the mass of water is going to be equal to the volume of the water, which is 25 gallons, okay, times what? 
mass is equal to volume times density. And uh, the form of density that I'll choose to put in here is one kilogram per liter. Okay, great. That's the mass. What's wrong? Okay. I mean, that we could put in there gallon, gallon kilograms per liter, right? And that is a statement of mass, <laughs> right? But it's not our most useful one because once we punch that into the calculator, um, you know, anyway, it just won't work, right? We, we need it to actually have consistent units um, that all uh, converge upon a particular unit that comes out of it. So what do we need to do? Okay. I have up here, I knew we were going to need it, so I wrote it up here. This would be in the back uh, information in the test, typically. If you look through all the reference information in the back uh, and you had a problem like this, you would find a piece of information, something like that, in the back. Okay? So we put in 3.785 liters per gallon, just like it says on your milk carton. All right. And how does that help us? Okay, that gives us liters, but the liters cancel with the liters I had right here. Gallons cancel with gallons right there. It ends up giving us kilograms. Okay, so 25 times 3.785, 94.625 kilograms. Okay, how do I use that? Okay, right down here, 94.625 kilograms, then what? Specific heat of water, 4180 joules per kilogram degree C, which by the way, that number is usually given in the reference information in the back of the test. However, that's one that gets used so often, it's probably worth remembering. Right, so that you don't have to go back in the back of the test and look for it. Okay, uh, then what? Okay, what we want to do is always go final minus initial. So final is 74 uh, degrees C, and initial was 99 degrees C. Okay, the reason we want to do that is so that we get the sign correct. What you actually see out of that is that the change in internal energy of the water decreases. Right, um, and that's what will come out by the fact that that value over there will be negative into 74 minus 99. Okay. All right, and this is going to be equal to the total energy change. How do I know what that is? Okay, voltage times current times time is energy. All right, voltage times current is power. Power times time is energy. So we take 110 volts. We don't know the current, so I'll just put that in there as I. And we put in here 14 minutes. Okay, and someone says, don't we need to convert that to seconds? Why would we need to convert that to seconds? Okay, if I want the I, the current, to turn out in amps, amps times volts gives me what? Watts, and a watt is joule per second. So that's the specific time basis of a watt is a joule per second. Everything that I have over on the left side is going to come out in joules, right? So it all works out as long as I put my time units in seconds instead of in minutes. So I agree we want to convert that to seconds. How do we do that? Okay, 60 seconds in a minute. Okay, we punch all this into a calculator. And, and solve for I, okay? And so, again, this isn't that, it really isn't that big of a problem. 4 times 11 times 3,500 times uh, 74 minus 1, okay? That gives me that first term over there, plus uh, 94.625 uh, times 4180 times... Uh, 74 minus 99, right? This is going to be equal to 110, whoops, 110 uh, times x, 
times 14 times 60. Right? I just entered that whole expression um, with an equal sign. At this point, you hit Shift Solve. It asks, is this the variable you want to solve for? By the way, in case you're curious what that number is, internally in the calculator, it uses this uh, kind of guess and check uh, technique of solving this thing. And in order for that to work, it needs an initial guess to try. And that's the number that it shows. This says, you know, hey, I'm going to try this answer first. Is that okay with you? And the truth is that as long as you are dealing with a, uh, a linear question, which that's the type of equation that this is, it doesn't matter what your initial guess is. It will, it will find it with no problem as long as it's a linear question like this one is. Okay? So I don't care what the initial guess is. Um, I just hit equals, and it will solve and give me 14.65. Units, amps, okay? And that's close enough. You know, this actually brings up another good point that a lot of people might wonder about. Some of you might get to this point and say, oh man, I got 14.65 and this says 14.64. Am I okay? What do you think might have caused that much difference? Okay. Actually, the only place that, uh, so I didn't round anything. See that? OK, I still didn't round anything for kilograms. All right. However, uh, just so that you have a, a picture into what's going on in these tests a lot of times, the exam is built in a program called MathCAD. MathCAD internally has a conversion from gallons to liters. And in a lot of these questions, we don't bother to, to make it exactly necessarily out to a you know, thousand decimal places exactly what we tell you it is. So I'll bet if you go into MathCAD and look for the, um, you know, the conversion from liters to gallons, it might not be exactly 3.785 liters per gallon. So that's probably the spot where we picked up a little bit of discrepancy between what we did and what was built into the sheet to calculate the answer of H right there. Now. How much does that affect the final answer of these questions? Well, let me put it this way. For this one, if you had seen a discrepancy at the tenths place, I would be very concerned, right? If I'm you and I'm solving this question and I get 14.54, I would go back and check my work very carefully before I just circled the answer H, okay? because that's probably too much to expect that a small discrepancy like that would have you know, caused a, a question to be that far different. Okay. Believe it or not, that's actually one of the things that uh, uh, makes an engineer good at what they do. If they can mentally kind of keep track of all the assumptions that they made and mentally keep track of all the places where they may have gotten some, you know, some, the outcome may have been affected uh, by some, something that they did along the way so that they remember what those were when they get to the end, right? That's, that's not an easy thing to learn how to do, but that's one of the things that makes a good engineer, someone who can kind of mentally keep track of all that stuff that are questions along the way.